one one is better than an o two. So um, every game matters for everybody. That's basically what it comes down to in this group because there's a potential that we could even have a four way tie depending upon how it breaks. But at the end of the day, you know, um, back in back in my day, I was a really big Raiders fan, and there's a, a famous saying by the um, old owner Al Davis that's just win, baby. It doesn't really come down to trying to figure out all of the weird statistics behind it and figuring out what exactly you need to make it happen. Just win the games and you're going to be able to move on. I think that's pretty much where everybody sits so far. And uh, looking like they're going to start off right, we already have the Bat Rider Band out as well as the Io Chen Faceless Void into a first pick invoker. You know, I'm going to mention there was a game earlier in this tournament where Swindles played the offlane Faceless Void and ended up getting around 700 GPM on it. It was what? absolutely ridiculous. He went wow. so ham, uh, went the Battle Fury build, and it was it was really unbelievable. Um, but this time we're going to have Invoker Earth Spirit, two very hotly contested heroes, and uh, looking good so far. Yeah, and both teams are very comfortable with this hero these heroes as well. Lee plays an amazing Invoker himself. I forgot who plays the Earth Spirit for complexity. Was it Chessy? I don't think it's Chessy. I can take... That'll be good. To have that competency with, and not just like sort of, you know, there's some heroes that pretty much everybody can play, and it just comes down to making sure you position yourself well. Obviously, this is somebody that the combos are very important, and Lone Druid also going to be taken. He's made a pretty big resurgence. We've been talking about him all this tournament. His damage to towers is ridiculous. Um, I, I, I like that. I'll, I'll look that up real quickly while... Uh... Ember Spirit. Okay, Ember Spirit. This is uh, the Eternal Envy hero. He's very comfortable with this as well. And the thing with Ember Spirit is that he's a very elusive hero. And obviously to deal with an Ember Spirit, you need either lockdowns or silences. Lone Druid, not the best hero to deal with it. Earth Spirit can actually be a very good hero in dealing with an Ember Spirit and an Invoker. Obviously he's just one hero. He's not going to be able to focus on both. So this is going to force complexity into a position where they need to draft heroes that are either going to supplement the push with this Lone Druid and just go all out push, ignore the Ember, ignore the Invoker, just push, push, push. Or they have to pick supports that are going to be able to lock down the Ember whilst trying to help this Lone Druid along with the push. To a certain degree, if they want to have push and disable, you do have the Shadow Shaman in the pool if you want to pick it up. He is one of the greedier supports, however, so if they do go in that direction, then they will have to try and divide up the farm between the Lone Druid and the Shadow Shaman plus the, the other two cores. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also worth noting, I so I, I couldn't find exactly who it was because um, Dat Dota doesn't parse data that way, but they've only played oh. one game as Earth Spirit, so this is going to be their second one so far, and um, obviously these teams have been practicing this hero. As soon as somebody ends up getting brought into Captain's mode, everybody wants to be able to make sure that they can play him. Same type of thing with Oracle. Uh, I'll also mention that as far as Ember Spirit goes... It, still running it quite consistently they've got four games played on it and they are three and one uh oh wait no sorry that's earth spirit they're two and four rather with six games so they feel comfortable running this hero but he isn't quite as good as he was before the minor nerfs aren't really the biggest part that ends up contributing to that i feel like it's more just the style of play that we're seeing now makes it more difficult to run an ember spirit um and you need something else to be able to sort of give him a bit of a steroid to make sure that he comes online that much quicker and i think that something like alacrity can do that it allows you to have maybe a bit more damage than you would otherwise uh, another way that we sometimes saw people boosting up an ember spirit was by uh drafting it in conjunction with a dark seer and then you can throw an iron shell on the ember spirit run in and just start going ham with the amount of magical damage you're able to deal out. So I'm curious if that's the way that Secret are going to try and play this. Uh, we also have the Witch Doctor Band, Enchantress, Bounty Hunter, and the Beastmaster. Slard are taken. Huh. Kind of interesting there, too. Hmm. So it means that they've got push potential with the Lone Druid, but they're not going to go completely in that push direction. They've got an Initiator with the Slarter, obviously going to be buffing up the bear because of the, the minus armor, which is great. Um, Because they're also on the Dire side, they will have the Roche advantage. So that does open up the Roche pit here for complexity quite a bit. They will be able to take it down very quickly. Mm. And to the Team Secret, they've got to respect this, and I'm wondering how they're going to sort of deal with all this minus armor. Obviously, Dazzle is a step in the right direction, because you mm -hmm. have the weave shallow grave is great as well because if you think about it they've got a lot of damage over time for complexity but no burst as of yet so that's where the dazzle is going to come in handy no oh, definitely 
Yeah, and I like the Lich pick too. Um, just starting to trying to double down on that armor and being able to make sure that they have at least something there to bulk themselves back up if they do get offensively weaved. The other thing about the Dazzle uh, Ember Spirit combo is that they both ended up losing vision components there with the weave as well as the remnants. Uh, but Invoker is still going to be able to Sunstrike it on out there in the Roche pit to keep eyes on it because that does feel to be one of those probably. I mean, Roche is always going to be important in every game, but uh, particularly in this type of game when you've got a lone druid being able to take towers so rapidly um a roche fight i think that we saw it yesterday in the the uh eg newbie game i want to say um eg was crazy far behind they had a lone druid that ended up just being able to run through they won one team fight and immediately all of the base of newbie was gone and i mean that was with newbie being ahead like 24 to 16 or something crazy like that and and having a pretty significant advantage but this hero he punishes you so heavily yeah he absolutely does a uh, fourth pickup at secret, it ends up being the Bane. So what's secret looking like as a draft for you? It looks mostly team fight. They don't really have the best push. So what do you think the draft is looking like so far? I, it, to me, this sort of seems like they just want to try and go for that. Not necessarily completely for protect one, but uh, at least to a certain extent, like keeping these heroes here bane is there to be a stronger laning presence in my eyes at least um considering you've got this ember who can get offensively dual laned if you if they're not careful um the other option is still to just like throw in the lone druid in that lane but with a lich picked up this to me feels like they could be going for like the slardar lich dual off lane possibly um or even just you know throwing him mid whatever you want to do there but i just think that the bane is mainly there to to bulk out the lanes a little bit and then uh you know get envy super fat on that ember spirit as we've sort of seen him do time and time again the broodmother also banned as well as that uh the viper i i think that a space creating offlaner would be really good for secret and i think that brood's a pretty good ban there uh, i'm not yeah. sure who else i could go for complexity last pick uh, I'd say for Team Secret, they sort of need another initiator outside of we on the Invoker. Because yeah. obviously Envy's never going to start a fight, just yeah. because he's an Ember Spirit. So I'm curious to see what they want to pick up for that offlane for Team I like Secret. I the Dark Seer, it's so, the Dark Seer still. Yeah, it is still available, good. right? Yeah. yeah. I'm on board with the Dark Seer pick. For Complexity, they've technically got... Uh, Earth Spirit could be a support, so they've got another core role, and that could be a mid. I, th I think we saw one game where ah, our spirit was run as a mid, but I like that. Lena. Right, so we got Lena. Well, it does make up for the fact that Lich doesn't... Oh, they got another disable with the support at least. LSA, I... Lena does great damage as well. So there's their burst, I suppose. Complexity has one hero that has all the burst. The rest but... of the team just sort of does... um damage over time yes I, I i i'm agreeing with you though that like they don't really have a lot of lockdown for this ember spear right now it, mm. it kind of causes a bit of trouble for them because like lena solves the problem of the dazzle where you don't have that as much burst damage like slardar gain the amp damage up and then maybe gain lone druid given a hug or two here or there it's a lot of burst but it's it's like you can see it coming and you have to get within melee range an Aghanim Scepter upgraded Laguna Blade is just going to be able to rip through somebody, and you do sort of need that to be able to deal with a Dazzle. Uh, so I, I think that it just sort of forces another like item or two up on these heroes, a little bit more for survivability. But at this point, I, I don't think that Ember really needs to worry that much. I feel like he can almost go straight damage right away. Uh, the only thing he really has to be worried about is like a Slardar Crush, and then basically what it comes down to is, do you think that Envy has quick enough reflexes to be able to you know, remnant away from that, and I, I, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> you believe. Yeah, I believe. I but we know. do run into a bit of a problem for Team Secret though, because their draft isn't that tanky. So mm. even though we, we said there was a bit of a problem for Complexity, where they didn't have all the bursts, they have a lot of damage output, and they can spread all of the damage out. And even yeah. though there's a dazzle, you're only going to grave one person, so they can always save the Laguna Blade for someone else after the Shallow Grave has been thrown out. Yeah, totally. so, te so technically options are open here for complexity whereas for secret they don't have much room for error when it comes to these team fights i don't think they want to be looking for team fights honestly i would be expecting team secret to just go for these um small two to three man skirmishes with the bane and Verker and possibly this last hero that's going to be coming through it's just much safer than trying to go for a five on five versus compl complexity no i completely agree and the other thing about that is this feels like it's going to be one of those games again um, as we do to see a clockwork, that initiation. Uh, so opting for that form, that's kind of interesting too. 
I I wonder what the thought was there. Um, it benefits and very current Ember Spirit because typically Ember Spirits don't want to be within melee range of their targets. They're consistently slide of fisting, so you can just slide of fist the target in the cogs. And Complexity are running three melee carries: Lone Druid, Slada, as well as Earth Spirit. So co obviously the cogs is going to now be a, a pro problem with these team fights where they have to consciously maneuver around it otherwise just bumping into it and losing a whole bunch of mana which obviously slada in particular has a very low mana pool to begin with so he's not going to like the cogs at all so clockwork is a good pick here for me yeah. and they also I, have a I good agree. initiator with them the hook shot no totally I, I completely agree the the more that i think about it like really what this comes down to is like they're 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 building for the later stages of the game um this is pretty good mid game but it's not going to be like able to necessarily kill other heroes like, super easily uh, unless you're sort of dealing with as we do see those lovely little sun strikes being thrown out right at the start to me what this really feels like is that you know what we're we're going to be having one of those games where we try and as I think that they are going to see hand skin over here um, they're going to chase him away he doesn't gain down the ward uh, it I, I feel like what they're really going to be looking to do is it's going to be one of those classic envy games where he's just running around. The team is trying to chase him and kill him, and he's just going to be trying to be elusive and throw out sleight of fists whenever possible, uh, which is pretty great. And like they were able to take the bane away. Complexity aren't running that. Um, yeah, I like the clockwork pick a lot. I, I'm thinking like late game here, you you hook somebody, you cogs them, Envy hits a couple of sleight of fists. Uh, those are game winning plays right there. And um, you can't necessarily make those same type of plays with a Dark Seer. For a Dark Seer, sometimes it relies upon the enemy team to mess up for there to be something really effective done. Uh, so I like it a lot. But we'll get a quick little introduction for all of the players out there. We got Handskin is going to be playing the Lich, Swindles is going to be on the Slardar today, Limp, Lena, as well as Z Freak on the Earth Spirit. And last but not least, Chessie's heading up top. It's that bear man, Mr. Lone Druid. So towards the bottom lane, sitting near the river, we have Wee on his signature invoker, moving up towards a little bit more into the jungle. Misery on that clockwork. I might have a bit of an engagement here. Z Freak and Swindles. We go for a bit of a beating onto Wee Hard Crushes there, but there are three heroes from Secret. There's only going to be a Cogs from Misery. It will send Z Freak back, but here comes Limp. Sunstrike not going to do too much to Limp, and Z Freak crushes there onto three. Can they finish off Misery? It's pretty low. They're going to get first blood onto the M Earth Spirit first before they get the clockwork. Very nice pick here for Secret, but they might lose Pile I Die. Still looking very healthy. Another crush coming out from Swindles. The right clicks are still there from Hanskin and Limp. The two brothers, can they secure it? LSA misses, although Pile I Die turns for a brain sap and he will finally drop to the Lena. But Swindles, he's actually salving himself. Fuck, now Puppy's in a weird position as Limp is going to finish up with the two brothers. Well, all of a sudden, that ends up being a three kill victory. <laughs> Complexity and Secret only get out with the first blood. That would end what? up equalizing that overall trade, if not making it better for complexity. My goodness. Uh, Slardar, I think, got f like two, uh, at least three crushes there. I feel like he might have even gotten a fourth one. That was ridiculous. Um, really well played. I, I, I can't really emphasize enough how well they were able to make that happen. And uh, just sort of those early game and skirmishes, you didn't have your Ember Spirit there. He was up top being able to get himself a nice little chunk of farm. But regardless, very, very interesting start to this game. And uh, Complexity definitely feeling pretty good about that one. Uh, also worth noting, they've switched up the lanes. I like this a lot. You know, we talked a little bit about the potential for Complexity to go for like a dual aggressive offlane. And they are running that. And so now we end up seeing Secret dodge it by bringing the Ember spirit up towards the top lane against the uh, lone druid and then we just stay and throw the clockwork down there i like this response a lot yeah just a very good decision makes the lanes a little bit easier as well because it, if it was eternal envy down towards the bottom lane he wouldn't really be able to do too much versus a lich and a slaughter he might even be harassed out of lane mm -hmm. so you gotta be happy with that farm but overall lanes looking yeah, not really seeing too many aggressive maneuvers by either side as of yet. Like, you're not going to be roaming around with the Lich. The Lich will just be sort of doing his own thing, taking runes, as well as continuously sacrificing those creeps. Is there anything that you're expecting from these teams during the laning phase? Is there any need to be aggressive from Secret? 
I think the biggest thing, I, I don't think they have to be aggressive. I, I really don't. I think the, the most important thing is to cure Envy some more farm. As we do see Pile Die getting dove a little bit in the jungle, needs to not get hit by this crush. The sprint is about to wear off, does finally get hit there in the end. A couple more right clicks. Body blocks are going to be coming in. The phase movement is already worn off. Now they're going to turn back around. Bane Sap, a turnaround, and Swindles is going to start to fall himself. Three man crush following it up. We do have Lena in the midst of all of it, going to be able to take out Wheat. And now Puppy is going to be turned on as well. A couple more hits. Light Trick Ray is going to connect and one more right click is going to do the job man complexity coming out firing right off the start they are not at all afraid right now and pile i die mr bane is just going to be able to walk away snickering to himself because you know what brain sap is a good spell i love this relentless play from complexity they're not going to let secret get their farm during in the mid oh they might try and jump onto limp though they're going to miss the combo so limp just sort of walks out of there a hundred percent handy dandy and that's unfortunate for Secret. And obviously because of those kills, Secret's not really in a great position. EE's fine up top because there's obviously no one there that to contest him, but to have Wii die already right off the bat, it really hurts him as an invoker because if he gets behind Alina, Limp is potentially going to be able to solo kill this invoker once Laguna's up. Yeah. Well, you, you know, as we do see a little bit more of a, a dive up towards the top lane, um, I really think it comes down to this clockwork pick at the end. Like, you see right here, they wanted to get something really good out of this dual aggressive offlane. And the fact of the matter is they're not going to be able to find kills here against this clockwork if Misery plays this correctly. I don't think, uh, at least until we get a little bit later stages and maybe Lich gets some more levels. Uh, and so because of that, they like they feel the need to be aggressive and move on into the jungle to try and take it out. And when they try and do that, they pick the hero in Bane who's just going to be able to walk away and, and not get killed by that because of Brain Sap and how great that ability is at being able to keep yourself alive. So the they sort of in essence have, have been able to to bait a really heavy reaction from a secret because um i, I don't know it just it, it feels like it's working really well for them i i'm i'm enjoying it take a look up top we've got ee just burning z freak as well as jesse yeah. and unfortunately being melee they can't really do too much about that they do have the bear mm -hmm. but you can't really rely on that looks like they rotated puppy up top as well also having to go for a tp down bottom because we do have a bit of a jump here onto misery the clockwork's relatively tanky but pilot die isn't still being chased up by swindles crushes there limpy has the lsa the grave will keep pilot die alive for that little bit longer but for how much longer he's trying to get away one hit and finishes the job vayne is down now puppy's in the line of fire and he gets taken down too tp's coming in we're gonna try and go for a turnaround but what can he really do by the time he comes in everything is just done and dusted they pretty much left in complexity get away with murder and secret my goodness. yeah oh my good this is just not the game for secret unfortunately their supporting cast isn't really able to do much versus a lich slana and lena rotation yeah they they're really making this work and you know oh complexity yeah swindles is gonna be fine a couple hits from that uh the cold snap but it, it's it's just really looking great for them um the dual offlane is working, and now you've you've got you know Limp and Z Freak trading off in the mid rolls. Whenever Lena wants to, she can leave the lane because Z Freak's going to be able to be here to soak up some more experience. Uh, across the board, just looking great, and I, I feel like they're going to have to make a switch here pretty soon. Um, but again, it it comes down a lot. I mean, we'll take a look at the net worth. Envy is still getting his farm. Um, oh God, they're going to get the silence off. They're thinking about going for it. Nightmare up on limp. They are going to be able to get the cold snap. This might be the end for him. I think that he is going to end up falling here. Is just a little bit too much damage coming in, and Invoker is going to be able to pick up the kill. Yeah, we're going to be very happy with the influx of gold because of the, the mega kill streak taken off of Limp. So hopefully it does sort of band-aid the, the wound that's there on Secret. And it looks like they might get Z Freak as well with Misery and Pile I Die. Battery Assault doing quite a bit here. It's just completely stopping him. Now the Nightmare as well. Keep him in place and they'll finish him off quite nicely. So two redemption kills right off the bat here for Secret. Not quite enough to completely stem the bleeding, but if they can get a couple more kills like that, they'll be in a really good spot. First of all, they just need six on Misery. Then yeah. after he's got that six, he can definitely start roaming around once he's got that hookshot available. 
Like I was saying, he's sort of the lone bright spot there as far as the laning stage goes. Um, and it, Complexity have done a good job of realizing that they're not going to be able to take him out super easily. And so I've been rotating to try and kill those supports. And you saw there, you know, he moves on. And he, I think that he was smoked up and went into the Roche pit. Um, and then as soon as the Earth Spirit walked over to be able to get that rune, he moved in to try and make the return kill. And now Z Freak is maybe going to find Puppy over here. Uh, Looks like he's just going to go stack the camp if he's possible to do that but might still run into puppy the stazzle up on the high ground and if they do they're definitely going to be able to go for a kill there we do have the spot i don't think that they're going to be able to get them no i don't think they will so but now it looks like the lanes have started to slow down a little bit interestingly enough envy is mid i wouldn't have expected an ember spirit to be the one trying to look for ganks but uh he was here for a little bit he left a remnant just in case anything does happen mid so good safety precaution here for envy knowing that if there was going to be an engagement in that vicinity he will be there although he will run into limp in the jungle and ee -E. gonna be walking towards this leader and oh, he just remnants behind her lsa does land if he didn't land i think he would have been able to get the chains but here we go Sun's Strike as well, they will not get limp! He's still alive! Oh, oh and there's no sun strike either, they just used it! That was such a missed opportunity. Limp has to be careful with his positioning, but they could kill Envy! Oh, oh. oh my goodness, that backfired completely. Yeah, you could see what he was trying to do there. He was I mean, he went for the the um he went for the remnant, he went for the jump to it. Uh, unfortunately, the Light Strike Array ended up hitting, so a, a really good play there by Limp to be able to make that work. But in the end, it just was not quite there in time. And so because of that, we saw just the he wasn't able to securely finish off the kill. Um, it's it's kind of tough because you're on this hero that needs a certain type of play style, but then because of the way this game has started, your team needs you to play a different way. You need to be able to make a little bit more space because you're like the only person really besides the clockwork, but that's been having a decent game. Uh, and it's just, you're not made for that. So I, I, I feel like at this point, um, you can't really blame Envy for that type of play. He feels like he needs to make something happen and it just doesn't end up working out. Uh, but we are going to see Chessy now. This is the plus side of this is that you've got a lone druid who is built for like making that space now and starting to be able to beat down these towers. Uh, it's this is this is looking really really bad for Secret. I don't know if they're going to be able to get enough time before they start need to come online. The only way that I really see this working out for them really well is if maybe you end up getting like uh, the quick level six up on clockwork and then afterwards you get alacrity on envy for team fights uh but otherwise i just don't think that complexity are going to stop they're going to keep rolling through this no i don't think so either i would like to see both misery and we try and go for a rotation together as those are the two tempo controllers for eternal envy to sort of hold the game down mm -hmm. although down towards bottom we've got a smoke here for complexity two of them smoked up a swindles is going to be seen in 100 percent light or 100 percent light and they are in a position to really backstab secret without them knowing so it looks like we're gonna have a bit of a play coming up from complexity we've got to keep an eye on it down there mm -hmm. as everything else seems to sort of t be toned down got three three moving through the jungle Final envy going for the rune i think and, they realize yeah. what's going on here that complexity are sort of sitting up in the area and you can see everybody from secret just left like <laughs> we don't want to be here anymore we don't feel safe we need an adult um <laughs> this, is, this is not okay <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh. Where is the adult though? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's a rough one. That's, that's for sure. I think Puppy is also going to be a really important uh, hero throughout this because you need somebody who's going to be able to keep the lanes pushed. Uh, and he's one of the few heroes oh, that really... E. Uh-oh. Uh, does he have a remnant back? I think that he might. Um, he, yeah, he does, does have, have one a remnant. Out. But, but he's silenced gonna... now. Chain Frost also going to come in. He's going to be able oh. to get out of there. That was close. Yeah, if that it, chain frost hit again, it would have definitely killed him, I think. Yeah, definitely. Oh, the missed the kill up top. That is huge. Really well played there. Um, so being able to dodge the gank, and that's sort of the power that you get from the Ember Spirit, right? Is that you you can get away from that type of three-person gank, whereas Lone Druid can't as well. Yeah, exactly. So great for Secret to get that kill at least and to also not lose EE. They're in the top lane, and... Uh, these three are not great at pushing together, but they will try and take this T1 at least, or at least do as much damage as possible before we get this pause. Mm -hmm. And we have lag. A at least both teams are lagging. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, they used a sun strike in that last one to use to get the kill as well. Uh, so, pretty good. Oh, we got a little unpausing 3-2-1 thing going on. 
We got that change recently. This is going to be my uh, first game seeing the the new patch that's come on out. I also saw that they show the like the um, the open mic thing in the drafting screen now, which is pretty sweet. A uh, couple yes. little changes. Thanks, Valve. Yes. Thanks, Valve. Might came a little bit too late, but you know, <laughs> as long as no, I arrived. It's fine. It's all good. Better late than ever. It was great. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, come back to me. Can Secret get a T2? They can at least do half damage and uh, half tower damage to this. Unless Complexity they just want to go all out and take their own T2, they'd be pretty happy with doing this too. It, I mean, it's it's still you're going up against the lone druid. He's going to be able to pressure this tower so quickly. Uh, and while they do have, you know. They have a glyph. They might be able to get back in time. They're TPing to defend this one. You know what? They might be a little bit of trouble. Swindle is, is going to be a little bit out of position. Hit the hook shot onto two. There's the battery assault as well. They are going to be able to run a little bit further forward. Uh, Laguna Blade off on over to Mizzy. Now we're going to end up seeing Eternal Envy. Chain. They're going to hit onto the limp. Haven't seen a second Light Strike array as of yet. The bear is going to fall. So they don't get the tier two tower. They lose the bear. Not the worst thing in the world. Oh, you know what? That's 63 seconds. No resummon. Mm, that kind of, that hurts Jesse quite a bit as he's not able to farm wow. as he would like to. But, but it also means that the lone druid's not going to be comfortable when it comes to fighting, just because you don't have that bear. Yeah. So uh, this does force complexity all the way back. If they did still have that, or a resummon at least, I would have expected complexity to go for a re-engage uh, re over there. Yeah. Although there is no blink on Swindle, so he would have to sprint in for that. Mm -hmm. Although... Blink on Swindles! This is going to come online very, very soon. I'm expecting high progression from the slaughter. Yeah, I think so. It, it really is going to come down to sort of, first of all, needing the bear or somebody else to be there to help fight. Uh, the key thing for me is maybe being able to catch Envy off guard. But again, it, they don't have the most reliable follow-up stuns. If you get that one and then you sort of have the, the combo from Earth Spirit to be able to get the silence after the fact. I mean, let's take a look at, he is leveling up the Boulder Smash. This is going to end up going to a 2.25 second uh, stun as well as the Geomatic Grip, which is 2.5 seconds of silence duration that's pretty good you know for you might be able to kill off the ember in that amount of time and i feel like this game is really going to come down to how many times envy can stay alive uh and and if they end up being able to sort of get him really farmed uh I think Secret has a really good chance to win, but it, it's certainly looking a little bit rough. I mean, difference in terms of team net worth is relatively even, but experience is really where we're seeing Secret suffer. Oh, we've got a smoke from Secret as well, and none of it got popped as Complexity moved through mid, so they are going to be coming in for a topside backstab. Misery is in position for a hookshot, although if he hookshots, his team's quite far away. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a see on how Secret wants to go for this. Will they move on down? They're oh, they're waiting, waiting for, for somebody to walk into the jungle, I bet. Yeah, and they're not gonna go. Uh, that's too bad. Are they gonna go for Roche? Maybe. I mean, they probably could, but it's a little scary. They need Swindles if they want to go in for the Roche. Yeah. There's an invisibility rune up top that they could take. Honestly, maybe we could take the invisibility rune and potentially go for a solo kill. Mm -hmm. Definitely a possibility. The whole time, this is buying more space for Envy, but the rest of the team isn't farming, so yeah. that's not the best. Uh, and while Swindles is going to be able to get his blink finished off as we were talking about and looks like Seeker are going to have to head on out of here. He's going to walk up and he actually has the ability to just walk up and cog somebody but there is a sentry ward right here in lane. So again, really scary. You do not want to get caught out at this stage in the game and he's going to walk right on into the sentry range in just a couple of seconds here. He might be waiting to get that hook shot. Nah, no, just goes for the rocket flare. So yeah. he's not going to use the invisibility rune unfortunately. But look at the defensive positioning from Complexity. They are so scared of being jumped on by Secret, which is... To be honest, it's a little bit interesting, but I suppose they don't want to lose their lead. It and might have gotten that... scouted by the Observer Ward too. That's yeah. the other thing, that smoke. But the thing is, you don't want to, you still don't want to lose your lead. Considering right, totally. the draft that Complexity is running, the moment they lose momentum, it'll be very difficult to combat the heroes that Secret are running. Although they're yeah. going to go for their own smoke this time. So we'll see if this one's going to be a successful one, as we've seen a couple of smokes backfire the past couple of minutes. And it looks like it might be a three-on-three -three engagement, as uh, this three-man squad from Secret is moving into the jungle. <laughs> Misery, Puppy, and we. 
versus Handskin Swindles and Z Freak. We'll see who comes out on top. They see Misery. They will see Wii at the end of this. And they're thinking of going in. Here we go. Crush gonna go straight onto Wii. So they bypass Misery. Hookshot is there. And he's gonna keep Swindles in place. But look at the two man crush setting up for the Chain Frost from Handskin. Handskin will die to EE in the meantime. But Z Freak finishes his job on Wii. We'll be losing his life to Misery Puppy and Pylite die. And Swindles, oh, he's hanging around for a little bit too long. Gets chained up by Eternal Envy. Crush is there. And unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna be a three for one. And he keeps chasing. No, they can't finish off Swindles. He's a little bit too quick. But a three, sorry, two for one trade. We versus an em uh, Earth Spirit as well as a Lich. Could be very happy with this if you're complexity. That's too bad. It looked like there was something weird that happened there. Em Ember still had his chains up, um, and normally I would have expected him to go for that after the minute, but maybe he was it, it was just coming off of cooldown when I clicked on it, uh, or possibly he ended up getting a little bit of lag or something, but he doubled back for a second. Uh, regardless, though, unfortunately, wasn't quite able to finish off Swindle there as he does get away this time around, and meanwhile, the TP's come in up top for Chessie. The bear is still hanging around. They need to be able to kill this one off. Oh, God. It would have been really huge if they would have oh, been able to e -E? catch him a second time. He's going to go back in. Chains connect first time onto Chessie. He can get the body blocks after the fact if he wants to. We do have the Ghost Walk coming in as they're chasing after the bear. He does get the poof away and TP back. He's going to just try and regen and then maybe go back in a second time. Now the rest of the team is there. Oh god, if he goes back to his remnant, oh, don't do it. No, I don't think he is. He's just right. walking to mid lane. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, that's good. That would have been uh, less than ideal. But TP boots up on Ember. Um, any other big items that we're seeing across the board? I think the blade mail for Clockwork, I mean, obviously it's super standard, but uh, to me at least, this feels to be one of those items that could be really important later, um, just because there aren't a ton of heroes on Complexity that want to have to build BKB. Yeah, and not just that though, but both Lena and Lich have been doing a lot of nuke damage uh, mm -hmm. to Misery in the fight. So obviously with the Blade Mail, that's going to really hurt, especially for hand skin, as uh, you can't really dictate where Chain Frost lands. Yeah. So he might, can, he might end up killing himself in the process. So this is good news for Misery, just to have uh, this Blade Mail up and ready, because it will just deter Complexity from him for a little bit. But it looks like for now, Complexity looking to take the top T1. There is a TP though, and EE is going to try and defend this on his own, it seems. And it looks like Complexity, they've just backed up and they're going to go for a smoke. And instead they're going to go for a wraparound. Ooh. And there's the line, so they're going to try and go for a backstab behind the middle T1. Tower will be taken by Chess, he's trying to hang around as the glyph has popped. There's Bookshot's going to be, they're going to try and jump to the bear. Misery, he's by himself, Pilot will be here, but Swindles comes in with a three-man crush! They put the Nightmare onto the bear, but it doesn't matter, they completely blow up Puppy. There's going to be no Shallow Grave and the bounces between the Chain Frost. They're going to get one more. Can they get Wee Crushes there? He goes for the Ice Wall, <coughs> and they get a third kill. Complexity. Ooh. They're on top of their game with these kills. It's amazing. I was honestly, a lot of people were not expecting Complexity to be playing so well at this tournament, but they've really been performing as a team. They've, they've been playing really well for a while now, and I, I think that sometimes people would recommend just like, or not recommend, a, a lot of people would just blame Secret in this one for not having a good, oh god, the jump forward crutch onto Swindled, realizing what was going to happen, and he's going to end up falling too much damage too quickly. My goodness gracious, that was really well played, and that's the, that's the type of moment right there. This is normally a play that you feel like you might be able to expect him to be able to go out there for one slight of fist and then not get killed, but they have been able to keep an eye on everything, and he jumps forward for the preemptive crush, realizes where it's going to be, and then is able to make it happen. I, I just feel like Complexity are playing on a really good level, and you can't take too much away from Secret here or, or say that they've been throwing this. This is just really, really good execution here by Complexity. I really want to give props to Swindles, though. How many multi-man crushes have we seen in this game? Yeah. We've seen more than five, and a lot of them have been dictating the flow of these fights. Like, this guy is an absolute monster on this Slardar. I wouldn't be surprised if Secret bans out Slardar next game. Or at least deny Picket, at least from Swindles. He's been playing ridiculously well on a Slardar. I'm still not sure if you need to like go for certainly not a first phase one, possibly in the second phase if it's going pretty well for his team. It it, it does feel like he's very comfortable on this hero and uh, is is really like I think one of the biggest issues is particularly for the offlane now is that you're going to be able to get almost whatever you want unless you really heavily commit to going for shutting down that offlane. I think that I saw Chuan the other day uh, playing a Rubik and. Yes. Go, doing one. a doing a really great job of making sure that not only was he shutting down the offlane enchantress in 
lane, but also would come up towards this off lane here and consistently block out this camp with either sentry wards or simultaneously going for something like just body blocking the camp to make sure that they weren't able to get it. And I think that as we continue to explore this patch, we're going to see more and more supports work towards being able to, to block off that camp there and it becoming a more high priority because you can't let uh, offlaners just get the tremendous amount of farm that we've been able to see recently. But so far, other big items that we've got, Complexity have been able to pick up a Radiance on Mr. Bearman. Um, this is this is what you want to have happen. <laughs> Radiance this is terrifying. As well as the Midas. That's terrifying. 21 minutes in and oh. secret. Bottom lane, yeah. they're going to kill of Envy again. A oh, really no. cool wow. Uh, but they were they were waiting there the whole oh. time for him just TP down to the bottom lane. Um, they are set up on him. And Envy's supposed to be that insurance hero secret. It's their late game insurance. He's well on his way to building those items, but the game is just not going well enough for him to get his items at a relatively decent timing. Roche will be the target now. Aegis will be going in the hands of Complexity, and I, and I expect them to go for a T2 push down bottom. Just more gold into the pockets of their heroes. And we have a... Ogre Club on launch, so I presume it's going to be a BKB after this to mitigate all of the control from Secret outside of the Fiend script from the Bane. Um, they're, they're so good right now at like not having any waste. Like you, you look at th those stuns that they stacked up there to be able to make sure that they got that kill on Envy. Swindles was set up in the bottom lane over in the trees. You had Lena that was waiting back just farming up the wave. And then immediately they go for a quick crush as soon as he TPs in, followed up by like that maximum duration stun to be able to go for the, the immediate follow up and the Laguna Blade coming out. It just, it, the fact that you're able to get this kill on that hero that's so elusive just by virtue of those two like stuns that you know oftentimes aren't thought of as being enough to be able to kill off an ever spirit and then follow that up by immediately going in for roshan there's no waste in their gameplay it's just really really well played very fluid yeah i, I guess that's the best way to describe them as a team but we will have a four-man rotation moving it towards the top lane so ee -E will be revealing himself to this top lane no not yet trying to go for a bit of a backstab here by himself and in the meantime complexity is going to be moving towards the river looks like they're a little indecisive with their movements so i think he might going top but now they want to go bottom they have vision of misery and uh there used to be a clockwork there <laughs> well um, he's not there anymore oh man spare no expense it's this is uh, i don't know I, I i think that um you know a lot of people say that they're sort of like cliches like they came to play today or things like that but they have they've really prepared for this match and now oh, they're gonna come stack. on in and st steal the stack as well oh god <laughs> couldn't get any worse it could not get any worse for secret they are struggling E is soaking up all the map on the farm which is fine but What's really left for the rest of the team? Wee's doing decently well because he has a hand of Midas has been moving around grabbing lane farm, but the rest of their team is... They're all dirt poor. They're, yeah. they're really sitting on no net worth, unfortunately. Yeah. I think it's also just tough by virtue of the draft again that you need to be able to come online. And I think that this is kind of also the problem with Ember Spirit as a hero is that it's just, you need so much to really come online. And you're seeing here, Envy is gonna try and do everything he can to, to cut this creep wave. Um, but they kind of realize what's going on and are gonna come back to try and find him. He's gonna be back towards the bottom lane, but they're just hunting him at this stage. Uh, so this is the point where you can start to see the value of this hero is his ability to delay the game. Uh, and if he's able to keep them chasing him around the map, this is really the best that you can hope for Secret right now, and this is this is the reason right here why they try and pick this hero. I, I want to see how well he's able to keep up this playstyle for a while, though, because we have saw that they've already been able to take him out once, um, and it's just going to come down to him trying to, you know, rat it out and, and, and keep the game as long as possible. Mm, because what he's doing right, it's preventing complexity from trying to go for any high ground push or any more objectives to say the least. And because of that, it means that EE is going to have more and more time to finish up the battle fury, which is crucial in that high ground defense. If he has it in the high ground defense, it gets a little bit easier for him. He gets like, entangled by the bear, it seems. So he's uh, he's going to run away. It's fine. He won't be really hurt that much, but just a little beaten up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, well. the high ground is... It's not looking that easy for Complexity either. They can send the bear up, but they never really want to fully commit high ground just because there's so much waiting up there from Secret. 
Yeah. Well, and I think this, okay, Remnant's gonna be forward. He doesn't have one anymore now. Oh, he's gonna TP. Can they Entangles? break it though? Savage They're gonna be able to Savage Roar. Oh, oh no. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> That hurts so I could I could hear it in your voice. <laughs> like oh, you're physically man. wounded by that kill. Yeah, no, it, it really hurts. You want to uh... be able to get away from that one, but it's just it, it wasn't quite ready. And um, the other thing now is that, like, you know, you say the high ground's really hard. I think that the way that complexity break it is by being able to just win the team fight and then push down a lane. Uh, you can see right now, though, that all of the other lanes are pushing in while this is happening. It's kind of okay because none of the tier one towers except for up top have been taken. So if they're pushing along this top lane, it's the one that doesn't have a tier two anymore. They're going to be fine to keep this pressure going. And honestly, I think at this stage, they might even think about going up for high ground. Envy didn't have his Battle Fury, and he's not going to have it for this next engagement. He's still 500 gold away from it. Nah, they're going to back. Oh, they end up hitting the hook onto the bear. Nicely played. And uh, Misery? Says, if he gets entangled he here, he's dead. Okay, grave four back. staff and grave. They had to keep him alive. If he died, then that would have meant high ground for complexity. I think that they're going to lose the bear here, though, unfortunately. They end up getting the kill. There's the resummon and going to send him back again. Poofing away. So two BKBs picked up as well on Limp and Swindle. So now there is nothing stopping these two outside of a Fiend's group, but I, we haven't really seen Pylidae being able to land those Fiend's groups this game. It's just been com completely dwindled by Swindles. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sorry, no, I had no, to do it's it. it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> it's, it's the best. Um, no, I agree. I, I think that it's a problem. He does have the Aether Lens, obviously. He's had it for a long time, so he's got that extra range on Fiend's Grip. But um, you do have several problems with it here. Uh, obviously, Savage Roar is one. It can cause a whole heck of a lot of problems in terms of your ability to keep that going. Uh, Swindles is another with his Blinks Forward and the Crush. Um, but they don't have a ton. The key one for me is really going to be Earth Spirit. His sort of, you know, long range stun that goes through everything and flies forever. Those, you know, boulders hurling around. Because that's really what I think what hurts Bane more than anything is that occasionally you sometimes aren't able to get in range to be able to break the grip. And again, we're seeing the same type of thing. Envy doing the wave cutting as much as possible. My question is, is it gonna be enough? This bear can push really freaking hard and they're ready to start moving up for high ground, it looks like, as they're gonna keep this pressure up. He's gonna have to TP back in a couple of seconds here and he is gonna have his battle fury for this next engagement, which helps out a lot. But look at how quickly this tower is going down. They don't have a glyph. The bear's just gonna keep hitting away. They do end up throwing out the cold snap, the force staff to keep the bear alive. He's taking a lot oh, of damage. Sunstrike sun oh. is gonna finish him off. That is so key right now. Really, really well played, but they did end up bringing down that tower to below half health. And the strength of the push coming out from Complexities is just immense. That was within a span of about five to six seconds. So that was a very, very quick push. And if you can do that much damage within that, t that short time span, if they just do it again, that tower's gone. Yeah. And so this is really scary for Secret because they don't have much time sitting high ground to decide when they want to try and jump onto Complexity or if they want to try and counterplay it. So... The openings for Secret are very small, and they've got to find those opportunities, but it's just so difficult when the game is literally going by so quickly. Yeah. No, definitely. And, I mean, you see there as well, like, we here on his Invoker is just constantly having to spam out spells whenever he can, and that's why he ended up having to go for that Aghanim Scepter. He is going just bare bones on survivability because he knows that he has to be that deterrent, the space maker, the person that can create enough time for Envy to get farmed up. Uh, he does have that natural steroid again in the Alacrity, and it's plus 115 damage. That's really significant for the Ember Spirit, just because that is dealt to everybody in an AoE when he ends up sliding. And for the high ground defense, that's sort of the, the silver lining to this uh, sort of stormy cloud that's been Secret's game. Um, 6 to 16 is the score, but you can see the net worth. It's 12k roughly right now, as well as 15k experience. Uh, there have been bigger comebacks before, and if there's a team to do it, if there's a hero to do it, it's Secret and it's Ember Spirit. Let's hope it's going to be the game for them, though. Especially the, for the Secret fans out there. Got to keep their fingers crossed. Have faith in your team. <laughs> but for now, you just got to sort of watch on and, and hope it actually happens. We have Limp, though, going on a bit of a mission here by himself. Under the cover of Shadowblade. And he's looking for... Oh, puppy. Don't... Not puppy, please. Okay. Yeah. Rip puppy. 
he wasn't able to get it off. Yep, that's I, I, there's nothing to do about that. Um, it happens too to take, quickly. Take one for the team. Better him than Envy. I mean, look at that. Five heroes rotated down towards that area to see if there was going to be a follow-up. Oh, pilot um, eye. So a little bit of space created. Uh, if he dies, that's also going to be... It's going to TP out. And, yeah. yep. Rip. I, again, it's the two supports space created. Um, they're going to have to deal with mid eventually. But... You can see also this arcane rune helping out a whole heck of a lot for Ember Spirit. Brings down Sleight of Fist to 4.2 second cooldown, which is really, really significant for high ground defense. And Blink Dagger going to be taken out, but they're going to trade and move on over towards this bottom tier 3 tower, and it's going to go down. And all of a sudden, you do have creeps that are up on the high ground breaking that backdoor protection. They end up throwing out the hookshot, are going to connect here onto Swindles. He's going to be a little bit out of position now. BKB has already been popped, as they are going to be able to throw out the Sunstrike. Not going to connect. Misery is still in a little bit of trouble. Can they defend this barracks, though? I'm not sure if they're going to be able to. Deafening Blast on the bear. Geomagnet will get back, and they do end up throwing out a couple more hits. Slight of Fist, as well as the chains, onto the bear a second time through. Cold Snap has been thrown out onto the bear. It's getting burnt down. Can they find the kill? Chains you need to be able to kill them, and they are. And that's going to be a no resummon. Oh, they do have the resummon. Never mind. It's already back up. Yeah, well, it's better to be safe than sorry, though. Just make sure you have another resummon after the bear is, uh, bear is being killed up, so... But they still took the T3, and mm -hmm. Com Complexity have been taking the game nice and slow, they've been taking it objective after objective, and not losing anything major, so they're playing this game very safely, and if they keep doing this, and if Secret can't find anything outside of bear kills, they're yeah. going to be losing Raxes very shortly. They are. I, I think, though, that if they're able to hold off in that manner for the next like if they only get a rax the next time that complexity come through um as actually we do end up seeing an item left down on the ground oh it's just an orb of venom uh if they can only get like one barracks the next time through i think that secret are getting close to rounding a corner here because we talked about that steroid damage coming in if if you know envy gets a crit that comes up pretty soon and i think that he can probably go for a crit because the type of kills that they've been finding on him there isn't any item that really defends against that those instant initiations coming in from the slardar so if he can get a crit then they can hold high ground much better uh dd also picked up here so i i am feeling still complexity definitely in the driver's seat but the longer this game goes on uh not that they become on a clock but secrets draft becomes better it does become better but you can tell by the way the complexity is building up their heroes that they want to finish it as soon as possible yeah. you got a desolator picked up on limp so oh, not geez. only is he going to be hitting hard, but the minus armor helps out the bear and the slaughter immensely. Yeah. And look how quickly Roche died. <laughs> oh. yeah, they, don't, they don't mess around, that's for sure. Uh, and game plan, same as before. Just keep them off the towers as much as possible. Pressure out this top lane. If they leave it alone, you're going to be able to jump in and start to take on down the top tier 3 tower. We'll see how it goes. The Aghanim Scepter is interesting. Oh, you know what? All right, so yeah, I forgot that you're... I thought that he had already picked up the Aghanim Scepter, but I forgot that you can grip back the bear uh, without the Ags also. Yes. So now he's going to be able to pull everybody back and doesn't even care. Also turn people into that enchanted remnant. <laughs> it's great, though. Just yeah. great damage mitigation, free four stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. Totally. So... They've got pretty much all that they need for the high ground push, and they're all making their way down towards the lane for the third time this game. Hopefully they're going to be able to fully break through and get those Raxes, just because having that Rax advantage absolutely helps them when they go for their, uh, their secondary push. But we could see a massive team fight here now. Secret, with no T3 tower, they've got to make something happen. So Limp, under the cover of Shadowblade, there is a Sentry Ward though. And he won't fully commit. And Misery just pops the cogs. Meatball ran out as well. Not going to do too much to Complexity as they were sufficiently far back. And here we go. Bear's going to start wailing on the tower. And Limp didn't even get the hit onto the racks, unfortunately. So no Deso debuff. They get Misery. Oh my goodness. He died so quickly. Iggy, though, he's so fucking he jumped in the middle of the limp. And he just melt. They're going to get Chain oh. Frost off. Puppy and Bear. Look, the rest is being taken. Where he can, but unfortunately he can't do that. Everyone on Complexity, they get what they wanted. The raid act is healing because there was no creep wave. Finally does arrive, but mission accomplished. Oh. Melee racks taken for Complexity. Also worth noting, Z Freak so huge in that engagement. He ended up being able to keep. I mean, the BKB was already popped for Swindle, but he was still able to throw in out that Enchant Remnant to make sure he didn't get hit by any of the other spells or right clicks that were coming in. So. 
Um, another hold by secret, definitely. They end up losing the melee barracks for it, though. So they don't lose all of their barracks. It's starting to come off, and the game becomes that much harder. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's. I still think they're in an okay position. Like, there's the, definitely the possibility for a comeback. It's 20k net worth lead into their favor, but you got the crit that's up on on Envy. He just needs to be able to be kept alive, basically, and. Um, the Ember or the Earth Spirit is just such a good counter to it in terms of those silences and the stuns that are thrown out directionally. And um, Z Freak has been playing an exceptional game. This is everybody from Complexity, really. Yeah, and you also can't say that EE. E you can say EE e is elusive, but the moment he gets hit with one disable or one silence from complexity, he's pretty much dead. There's yeah. so much damage output from complexity that he just gets 100 to 0 so quickly, like we saw in the previous team fight. He jumped right on right on top of Limp, who was hoping to get the, the clutch crits on the oh, entire team, but he just melted. Middle lane puppy's gonna go down. Oh, oh goodness. It's, it's, it's just a dazzle. Yeah, it's true. So. Well, it looks like they're not going to be waiting for anything at all as the tier 3 tower up top is going to start to go down and they're not playing oh, his better position. He's going to end up getting caught out. A lot of damage coming out from the Slight of Fist, but it's not going to be enough as Envy is going to be off to the side trying to go for another one, but Pylidae is getting chased on the bear is on top of him. Puppy is now going to get turned on as well. Limp is going to be able to Shadow Blade away and there's going to be the Yule Scepter lift on up into Ice Wall. Can they find a kill here on this bear? It looks like they're going to be able to as he finally does go down, but still... They ended up losing one, and that was a buyback, I believe, on the Invoker. So they needed to expend the buyback for the Invoker, as well as the Clockwork recently, to and be able puppy. to make that hold. Puppy bought back as well. Uh-oh. Those two buybacks. This is so huge, though, for Secret. Because there's the buybacks, and they got absolutely nothing but a bear again. There's just no progress for Secret. They're just being set so far back with all the buybacks. Oh, and they're going to try and go... This is a play that Secret... It's a desperation play, but they need to make something happen. They can't let Complexity do this to them, but it's it's going to be almost impossible to jump on Complexity. They're all just no. sticking together because they know they're strongest together. If they don't get caught out, how are you going to lose the game? Unless no. you miss step badly, then obviously that's another way, but it's just this, they're playing so well, and there's mm -hmm. so little opportunity for Secret to make anything happen. We'll see if... Oh, not Misery. Misery be very miserable very shortly. <laughs> they may spot him with the bear, they do see him, he's gonna be bent with Radiance. And Crush from Spindles, oh they popped the Blade Mail, didn't pop the Crush, he's hanging on to it. Ooh, Unless that Misery nice should be dropping. Oh, that was really good play. Yeah, that the was... The reinitiation, oh, Limp, he's gonna get caught out, there's gonna be the BKB turnaround and he is gonna end up falling. Sunstrike, gems on the ground, Puppy is gonna fall, they can kill off Limp though, but it came at the cost of three heroes, Aegis expires off the back of it, Envy now gonna get jumped on, can they have a way to cush him down? Oh, he's gonna go down, and now you're looking at a situation with four dead and buybacks on only the Ember Spirit. Invoker is still alive as well, but he's gonna be right off to the other side, there's the buyback for him, hits onto two, he ends up getting silenced up, they need to be careful here, to keep some type of damage on the bay, but I don't know if they're going to be able to. Catches the crutch a second time through. Oh, Another no! stun, and that's a dieback. This might be it. GG ends up getting called, and Complexity take it really, really executely, uh, just <laughs> exceptionally executed. Oh my goodness. What a dominating game from Complexity. The game one of this series. We've got one more game after this. Obviously, if Complexity can 2 0, they are in the best position of their lives, whereas for Secret, their lives are in the balance.